Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is June 5th, 2015. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Thanks for joining. I hope you have a project tonight. It's all about what we can do together in 60 minutes or maybe even a little bit shorter because it's been a long week, but we'll see how things go. At least we're here and we're ready to play with fiber together. So welcome. I'm still, as you can see, still down here on the vineyard in my old bedroom, my mom's second bedroom, and I have some things to share with you, and we're going to talk about deer jam, we're going to talk about knitting, we're going to talk about a lighthouse, and a lighthouse move here on Gay Head, and that should be about it, and of course, always send me pictures of what you're working on to lmarquadon at gmail.com, you can post them on Simply Colorful on our Facebook page, or on our Google page, and Certainly, this is all about just sharing what we're doing together. So, my Dear Jane quilt continues, and I wanted to show you what I did last week. Last Friday night, we did D10 Battlefield, and I just wanted to show you that I did finish it, so I get that credit. <laughs> I haven't quite trued it up, but for the most part, that's it. And again, that's D10. And I wrote in it that I started last week. I actually finished it about an hour ago and um, used my mom's sewing machine that's behind me still and discovered that the machine really needs some oil. And so I'm not going to use it as I had planned tonight, but I'll get some oil so that hopefully it will be ready for next week. So I was going to do the Bennington Star, which is H7. And I'll just show it to everyone just so that you know what it looks like. And again, if you don't have this book, highly recommend it. It's The Dear Jane by Brenda Papagatis. Papadakis. Sorry, Brenda. And love this book because it has the actual drawings of all of Jane Stickle squares and different pictures to provide inspiration. So, and I'm writing in it every time so that I know over the period of probably 10 years when I finish this, we'll know what was going on. So the Bennington Star is this light yellow one. I don't know if you can see that. Ooh, that's going to be hard. Well, my plan is just to do, it's just a very simple half square triangle patch to make the star shape. I don't know if you can see that, but I printed it out with my Dear Jane software, and it's ready to go once the sewing machine's ready. So, in lieu of this one, I went through and found one that could be done by hand, and the one I picked was D8 DD's Delight. So, let's see what that one looks like. And here it is in pink. So it's literally eight pieces applique on. And I have turned over the eight pieces and I have just basted it on here. So I thought I will just do the needle turn applique on this and finish it out. And it's bigger than the four and a half inch square. I'll square it off after I get those all done. So that's what I'm going to be working on. What do you all have that you're planning to work on? And I pre-threaded my needle here with silk, although I, I think my needle's too big, really, to take advantage of the daintiness of the silk, but we'll try it. If not, I have my handy-dandy Sterilite container here that has some just regular cotton that might work even better. Of course, I don't have a dark blue, but this might work just fine. Oh, here's a lighter blue. Yeah, that might work. So, let's see who's out there. I think I know, I know, I know that it's graduation time. And several of you have written in, hey, and said that you were at live um, 
graduations, but I did just see Sarah's out there. She says, I'm watching you live and knitting on a new sweater. Good to see you sewing on Dear Jane. Well, thank you, and please send me a picture of your sweater, and I'm going to show folks the picture of the sweater that you finished this week, if you don't mind. Everyone, take a look at this. So Sarah, earlier this week, she found this a UFO. And those are pieces of the sweater that I think she also had finished. I don't think it was that far along when she found it as a UFO. And literally, over the course of several hours, she sent me that picture. And then she sent, and it was during a, one of the rainy days earlier this week here in the Northeast. Just rainy and drizzly and a perfect day for knitting. And look at that. Could it fit any better? Isn't that nice? Sarah, that is just so, so nice. Love it. So for anyone out there who's inspired, that inspires me again. Sarah and Patty, just keep working on your UFOs. It's amazing what you can find in there. Ah, And Jean just said, speaking of someone who is at graduations, she is at Hopkinton High School graduation. She just watched Mary Marquodont, my niece, Bob's and my niece, graduate, which is lovely. And she said she's going to see if she can catch us live from her car while she waits for Sarah to take pictures with all of her friends. Oh, how funny. Well, if you're there, Jean, hi. Uh, I'll send you a quick note. Have fun. Oh, and thank you for the tweet there. S. Mastbrook. That's cool. Thanks. And DDR Quilter. And So Excited Quilt. Thanks for the quilt. Sharing the love. Who's out there? Hey! Sue Norton. Hi, Sue. She says, I got home early from today from work. Love that. Changed my clothes and ran to my sewing room. She says, I've sorely been and my internet is connecting. I'm curious. I hope you can see me okay. I'm actually not very far from the, the cable and the router. And I think the performance is good, but but actually on my phone it's not as good. So Sue, I will read the rest of your message in a minute. I'm psyched that you're home and that you could go into your sewing studio. And you made me laugh when you said that talking pipettes, beakers, and test tubes was right up your alley. I forgot that you were a scientist. No, I didn't forget. I was. You reminded me again that you were. That's fun. So what else is new? I have. I hope you've had a good week. My week has been really good and busy, and I can report that my mom's week has been really good and busy. And she's an inspiration to us all. She did her her work, her therapy, all five days of the week. So. Next time anyone feels like maybe not exercising or not doing what they're supposed to do, take that as inspiration that we can do it. So that's the good news. And what else? My husband Bob came down middle of the week, which was great. He did so much cleaning around here that um, and raking in the yard and um, cleaning up the shed. You know how you save like plastic bins that flowers come in? My mother must have had, she had hundreds of them that she had saved. And she's not a pack rat by any stretch. So certainly there wasn't that much to cull through, but it sure was nice, is nice to be able to get into the garage, you know, he just swept the floor, things like that, reorganized a little bit. 
I did some trimming. I only made one big trimming boo-boo on the shrubs. And I know this is random jibber-jabbering. But I, ugh, I could just kick myself. Mom has winter berry bushes, a male and a female. And the male that we need to pollinate the female so we get the pretty red berries in the fall, I thought was part of, oh, um, another plant that, of course, I can't think of right now. So don't you know, it was right next to it. So I cut off the biggest branch with the most pollinating uh, flowers on it. But I did leave a little bit, and so that will be fine. But boy, has it, it was cold down here this week. I don't know what's been going on where you all are. But for, for a location that's supposed to be going into spring and into summer, it was in the 40s. We even had the heater going here one day. Crazy. So work trucks along, too. Just for the record, we, we're keeping that going. And, and it's nice to get creative again. I must say, you know, I haven't done anything all week. But it was nice to get back to this block today. And it felt good. So we'll just keep going. Tomorrow, like I've told both Bob and my mother, I am going to work on a doll here. I didn't bring any of my things here, but there are plenty of things around that I can use to make something. So let's see who else is out there. Maureen. Hi, Maureen in PA. She says, I was working on a pinwheel block for a guild raffle quilt and had to stop because I lost one of them. Oh, don't you hate when that happens? Where'd you lose it? I'm loading up the rest. Oh, and it's slow to load. Oh, boy. Bummer. Well, Maureen, when I get there, I'll read that. Oh, and... Yep. Here it comes. Nope. See what's happening? It's loading. So, again, I guess... I just got a tweet or a message from Sarah saying that the feed is working well. So thank you, Sarah, for letting me know that. That's good. It must just be my Verizon network going up to the cell towers. It's, and Sarah says it's been cold there, too. Yeah. Huh. I hope you're getting out walking around the state park there and that your boys are settling in for a nice summer. Sarah has had one son graduate from college this year, as you may or may not recall, and another one deep in the throes of college, and both of them are hard workers and have bright futures, that's for sure. My sister, KB, is probably not out there tonight because her son, Tommy, graduates this weekend. So they are fully in graduation mode. They had awards night two nights ago. And congratulations, Tommy, on your awards. That's You got one for computer forensics. And I should remember there were three of them. I'm not remembering all three. But Karen said it was well worth the three-hour award ceremony, as any of you with children I'm sure know about. And so Tommy's twin, the one that I always talk about how my sister had Tommy the same day that Bob's sister had Mary, Mary just graduated tonight. That was the twin I was talking about. So that's kind of fun. Okay, one piece down. Now where is... Hmm. I 
have my little scissors. Well, I'll just use these big scissors. Doesn't matter. Oh, there they are. These my little grippers. My little pinchers. I like to take out the basting after each piece I do because it gives me a sense of accomplishment. So here I'll show you what I mean. This is the one I just sewed on. And see how it has the yellow stitching, big basting stitches? What I like to do is Oh, oh, and you're going to see how terrible my, I did not hide my stitches, but at least you can't see any yellow. So one down. Now I think I'll do the opposite one. You know, and this is not going to be a perfect quilt. It's just going to, but it's going to be mine, and it's going to have a history, and throw that away. And I'm going to do blue, I guess. You know what's going to be fun, like Susan out there, who is working on hers, or any of you, any of us, Joyce, as we look, as we amass these Dear Jane blocks, I love that we're building a story, and once the quilt is done, we'll, we will have done a lot of living in between those blocks, and those blocks kind of represent the different places we've been, milestones. And I like that idea. I was noticing being down here that mom has so many things that she has made around here. Like right on the edge of this bed there is a Afghan. Check this out. That I can remember mom making when we were in high school. Isn't it wonderful? I don't know if you can see see the different stitches. And it's big. So anyway, that was fun. I was sitting here just getting ready for Fibercast and realized that was there. And then I guess while we're on the knitting, maybe Jean is in her car now. Jean, here's your hat. I'll put it in the mail. It's fully dried. And I think it'll be funny if it's ultimately too big. It can't be too big. It's very... Although when I blocked it, I did stretch it. So we'll see. And then... Here's the progress on the scarf so far. I'm sure I made a mistake in there, but I'm leaving it. So that's kind of fun. Of course, the cat here loves anything with thread on it. So you almost can't, you can't really knit with the cat around. Because she'll come up, he'll come up and he'll just snag at it. Okay. So we'll get a second one of these done. So Maureen is working on a pinwheel quilt. I know Jean has been doing some commissions. Chris, if you're out there, finished quilting my BH quilt. And is probably doing... 500 other things as well. And of course, Sarah, you know, is on to the second sweater of the week. That girl doesn't quit. My inspirational friends. I took a walk during a break at work today and in doing so, actually, another aunt, my mother's sister, was in the car and beeped at me and stopped. And she had just been down doing a painting class at the senior center. 
in watercolor and she had another aunt with her and her granddaughter Reed and so the three of them had been to painting and what fun it was to see them on the side of the road and saw my Aunt Anne's painting and isn't that great? The, my Aunt Nancy was an art teacher for many years in Pennsylvania, in New Hope, Pennsylvania. And she's an artist herself and now she does these art classes for seniors both here in town and then up at the hospital or the nursing home. And imagine how fun or what a gift that is to others in the community that she does that. She brings in a still life usually and puts it in the middle of the room. And everyone brings their materials and just catches up. It's just like a knitting bee or knitting gathering or quilting bee. Okay. And now we're two down. I heard a buzz. Let's see who's out there. Hey, Sarah says she likes the hat. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, this is the one that we got at the Fiber Loft up in Henniker when I was with you. And the, I think I, in fact, do you have the pattern? Did I give it to you? It's the one where you knit the square first this square in the bottom and then you pick up stitches around all four parts and then you knit it down and I really if I were to do it over again I would make it all red and I would have made this longer but this is literally the child size hat and you all have seen this that's right I talked about how it was just the wrong size and it kept falling off my dub double pointed needle anyway Okay. I wish you could come to the end of the month doll making class, Sarah. The one that's going to be in Worcester, but I know that you are out straight. My plan is to leave here on the 21st. I have a business trip to Sacramento. And then when I come back, I'll have a day back in Hopkinton, and then I'm going to go take that doll making class. And this doll making class is the one I talked about last week where the body's made out of fabric and stuffed, and the clothes are made out of paper mache clay, which will get hard. So it's an opposite type of doll. I'm very curious to see how that goes. Aww. How cool is this? Sarah says, yes, she does have the pattern. <laughs> ah, love this. Oh, in fact, now I'm remembering where you're going to be. So Sarah, as you may or may not recall, is from the Batchelder family. I hope I get this right from up in Vermont and she created a family tree quilt that starts with her parents and it's it's a beautiful piece of work and it's actually going to hang at the Vermont Quilt Festival and I believe that's where she'll be at the end of the month which is just a great thing in fact I've said to her I'm not sure how we make it happen, but if anyone can, Sarah can. This quilt is so remarkable that it I can see it ultimately being up in the um, Sturbridge Museum. Do I have that right? No. No, Sturbridge is in Vermont. The Shelburne Museum. Ay -ay -ay, in their extensive quilt collection. Or maybe the Bennington Museum. But I think I think Shelburne.
this is the worst applique I've ever done. Maybe I'll pretend that I'm trying to make it be folksy. In fact, without even thinking about it, I just double threaded my thread. So not only can you see stitches, but you can see double threaded stitches. Also have my travel plan set for dis for July now, and we're heading to North Carolina for the middle of July for a national county government show, and actually as a customer appreciation event, they have invited everyone to go see the NASCAR museum. I think it must be in Charlotte somewhere, but that's kind of interesting. I may not be there that day, but it's nice to know that they're going to do that. Of course, this is one of those shows that isn't on a Monday through Friday. It literally, there are sessions on Friday, and then I will set up the booth, and I will be there with bells on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for anyone who wants to swing by. The good news is that the convention, which again is the, it's the National Association of County Officials, NACO, and the county in which it's in, Mecklenburg County, where Charlotte is, North Carolina, happens to be a big customer of ours. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's always nice when that happens. It's like we were at Harvard University. I wasn't, but the team was earlier this week. And it sure is nice to be able to say that we were there, that we helped them store their information. Just makes the conversation that much easier to talk about what next, whether it's research catalogs or, or uh, searching archives or analyzing different archives. In this, what um, oh, I forget what I was going to say. Three down. And I'm going to cut it. I think you're going to like this. All right. So there are three of the dark blue ones done. So I'll do this fourth one right now. But first, let's see who's out there. Ah! <laughs> Sarah will be at Vermont Quilt Festival. While we're making dollies, she wishes that she had a clone. Me too, man. Think of all the things you could get done. Oh, that's right. Karen, KB, my sister, just wrote in. She said, missing Fibercast because she's at Relay. That's right. I meant to congratulate you. Way to go. That's at Southern Columbia, and she's doing her annual Relay for Life. That's great. You really are going to have a busy weekend. Aw, and she sent a picture. Aw, there she is. Here, I'll blow it up. Aw, look at her. We miss you, Karen. Come back and sew. Where are the people? Are you walking by yourself? Just kidding. That was a joke. Oh, I see one or two. <laughs> I see, too. <laughs> I don't know. You know, we've talked about this before. Everything in life has 
uh, beginning, middle, and end. And I think that's true with Relay for Life as well as a fundraiser. It certainly has had a wonderful run, and I'm sure it will still continue for years to come, so don't get me wrong. But I have noticed we went to our Relay for Life in Hopkinton a few weeks ago, and there were just far fewer teams and far fewer participants than there had been five years ago. And for whatever reason, you know, things come in and out of vogue. They, We all like to do different things, something new. So it's just interesting. So this, anyway, the reason I brought that up was this Relay for Life in Southern Columbia. My sister's been doing it, I think she said 13 years. And I mean actively running it. And doing all sorts of creative things to energize the community and they've raised thousands, tens of thousands of dollars over those years. And she was saying that really in the last couple though the interest has waned. And so I was just joking about there not being many walkers. I don't think there are as many as there have been in past years and maybe all of the sleeping tents, although they stopped doing the sleepovers a few years ago. I think they only go until midnight. But it's great to see her, and I'm so glad she sent that note. I keep thinking about Maureen there, also in Pennsylvania, with your raffle quilt. Tell me what um, quilt block it is, and maybe I can make you a block, if it's one block. <laughs> or one of us could help you. It's a bummer if you misplace one. It's kind of like when you would make a mistake in your knitting, how it always seems easier if someone else rips it out and get you back to a starting place. I could make you a little block. Get you right back on track. My cousin Ben delighted us last weekend, I guess, after Fibercast, maybe. Last week, he sent a note to my mother saying, I'm going to be over to pick up the garbage on Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock. So he did that last week and it was just such a nice thing and I'm looking forward to seeing him tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We've packed up the garbage, we've got some um, recyclables that Bob packed up. All those containers with the flower, the plastic flower pots. Shout now or forever hold your peace. Those babies are going to recycling. Okay. So, this is good news. That. Okay, so I'll show you all four of the blue are done. Let's see who's out there. Oh, and my hey. At least I'm seeing the notes. Let's see if K Sue Norton's... Oh, it's still loading. So, Sue, I'll reply to you after I look at the pictures. I'm sorry I can't read your whole note. And I do see Sandra says hi. Hope things are better up your way. They are, Sandra. Thank you. Things are doing just great. 
She says, I'm watching and resting as I've been to the chiropractor. Uh-oh. Four, and then similarly, it's loading. Oh. Well, I hope that you are feeling okay. Just rest. Drink some sweet tea. Just, just rest. Hey, and Kathy says, yay for Fibercast. She says, hi to Lynn and hi to everyone in Fibercast land. So nice to see you back in the saddle again. Thanks. It's good to be back in the saddle. Albeit, you know, I'm still, I've got some training wheels on. I don't really have things set up yet, but I will. And she says, no sewing here tonight. And then she's also loading. <laughs> now, we've done a little research, and apparently there is a cell signal booster that we can get. And I think I might try it down here. And then there's also a Wi-Fi booster that you literally plug into the outlet from Netgear. And there are lots of them, but the Netgear one got high ratings, and it was relatively reasonable. So I'm thinking of getting one of those, and I'm going to plug it in here so that it can possibly get out to the garage. So that's my plan, is to be able to get Wi-Fi out there. Look at that. It's still loading all of these notes. Oh. Well, maybe I could read past notes. Oh, Colleen! Nope, see, that's not even. Did everyone see Evelyn's, the picture of Evelyn's grand, um, niece? Was it niece? Olivia. She did, the, the quilt she did in 60 Minutes every Friday night, that's lovely. Then she sent the picture of it with Olivia on it, and it's just a wonderful picture. Now it's not loading either. But. Hmm. Let's keep going on this. You know, this is... If we just keep going, we do get things done, and it inspires me to do more. Had some, had a leaf of baby kale today that Aunt Nancy has grown, and it was yummy. It was so tender, and it had a tremendous amount of flavor. It was, I want to say, red. I don't know if they call it red leaf, but it definitely had red in it. And like my mother said, she said, that's the way to eat kale. It was literally, it's no taller than six inches. So maybe this weekend we'll try, try doing something with that. Aunt Nancy said she has more seeds. Has anyone planted kale lately and noticed how small those seeds are? For such a hardy plant, the seeds are tiny. I think maybe I'll get through one more of these and then call it. I don't think, oh, I know what else I wanted to share with everyone. The, about the lighthouse. So I showed you the knitting. I wanted to bring you up to date on the Gay Head Lighthouse. So this lighthouse was originally put up on Gay Head or Aquina in 1844. And what's happened as a result of all of the erosion of the cliffs was 
that it had become quite close to the cliff and to falling off. So literally, through some heroic efforts, money has been raised and uh, petitions were made, and over several years, they raised a lot of money, and they literally this week moved the lighthouse from here back about 150, and I'll read you exactly, uh, 129 feet. That's it. But it really is further back from the cliff. So it was moved from here all the way back there to a cement pad. And they did it on metal I-beams. The, the lighthouse itself weighs 400 tons. And of course they had to bolster to put it together such that it didn't break apart when they moved it. And it's been a success. They did that all last week. So literally on Saturday of this past weekend, we took a ride up. And what a sight. We were able to get up quite close and see it. And let's see what else I can read you about it. Um, Occupied the site since 1844. Ooh, the, the move was planned for two and a half years. Wow. And it was done by International Chimney Corp and expert house movers. Um, project managers say they hope the new location will be stable for another 150 years. See what else do those pictures show? It's just really pretty. And again, it's at the Gayhead Cliffs on Martha's Vineyard. You can look at it, it's at the the westmost part of the lower part of the island. Ooh. And here is some interesting information about the Netgear Wi-Fi booster. Again, Sarah, man, if I had a, we should have giveaways for the most active participant. You would get it tonight. Thank you. You're making this a wonderful fiber cast. She says, we use a Netgear Wi-Fi booster at home, and it works great. Wonderful. She says, are you going to be on the island another week? Do you want to visit? I can bring emergency sewing supplies. <laughs> I love that. It turns out, no, I'm actually heading home next Wednesday and Thursday. So, but that's that's the only time I'm off. So yeah, we should we should look at our calendars. I'm working um, during the week, and I'm coming home for appointments on Wednesday and Thursday. So, thank you. Maybe I can catch you when I'm off island up there. So fun. So the Netgear Wi-Fi booster is a go. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And yes, so maybe not this week, but some week soon. Come down for Fibercast. Hmm. Okay. So I'll finish this one, and then I think we will call it. It was so nice to read everyone's notes from last week. You all made me giggle. Tanya said she could hear my mother in the background, which was so cute. We walked all the way up to the garden today. First big walk all the way up there. Big day. I think last year at this time, we were, weren't we working on the picnic quilt? 
It might have been. Okay. Let's tie this off. I hope whether Sandra, who is resting her her back or what the chiropractor worked on, whether you're just watching or um, multitasking or working on a sewing project, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy. We can't always be working, that is for sure. Can't always be working on charities. Sometimes we just have to do something that we want to do. So I highly encourage everyone to do that this weekend. And I'll show you one more. So I just did that one. And by next week, I will have done this one, this one, and this one. And then we will call D8, DD's Delight. We'll be done. And we'll have another one done. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. I really appreciate it. I really love seeing you and seeing, hearing what you're doing. Keep on keeping on. Enjoy the spring. Enjoy the gardens. And we'll see you next Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Bye, everyone. Happy quilting. <laughs>